this is quite an emotional moment for me. Uh, I've been growing food for the last three years and I never expected it to take a grip on me like it has done. And right here, what you can see on this table is the fruits of my labor and to see it all come to fruition after sowing the seeds in the cold in March to harvesting ripe, juicy tomatoes now that I'm gonna preserve, I'm gonna to give to friends and family and neighbors that's gonna nourish us all is an amazing feeling. I'm learning as I go, but it's the best, it's the best teaching nature is, is teaching me. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk around the gardens totally uncut and uh, tell you all about what I've got growing and show you the variety. I even picked my first watermelon today. So I'm gonna try and be a one take wonder. I am not a one take wonder, but we are today. We're just gonna wander around. I'm gonna to talk to you about where we're at in the garden and the place that I need to start first is my watermelon. We are about to harvest my baby watermelon that's been growing outside, believe it or not. Look at this. It's so cute. Should we cut it off? <sighs> Look at that. That is magnificent. Well, I didn't expect to grow a watermelon at all. So this baby one is, I'm happy with it. And it managed to grow outside. And the one that grew outside, well, the one that I planted outside is actually doing better than the ones that I put inside the greenhouse. I can't wait to cut into this. Let's go in the greenhouse whilst we're here. I'm actually trying to get my um, feet less like city person's feet. So I'm trying to walk around barefoot as much as I can. So if you see me hobbling around, that's because I'm wearing barefoot. It's very warm in here at last. We've had some really bad weather, but the sun has come out recently, which I'm so happy about because it'll give my chilies and my peppers an opportunity to ripen up. I'm so excited looking over here because we've got Scotch bonnets and they're fruiting. This is my favorite chili of all. Look at that. So we got the Scotchies on the way. I'm gonna wait for them to turn their majestic yellow and red and orange color. That's gonna be an amazing addition to the kitchen. What I think I'm gonna do with them is ferment them and make a, a fermented Scotch bonnet chili sauce. Look at this giant tomato. We gotta to cut this for you. Let's try and cut it off. It's a cluster. I actually forgot the variety of this. So if you guys know, come on, let's cut it. Look at that. You would pay good money for this at a market and I've got an abundance just from one single seed. I'm super happy with the tomato harvest this season. Absolutely delicious. Oh, yes. Put that in the basket there. Um, yeah, peppers are doing good. I tried this variety. I'm going to try it on camera for you now. I don't know what it is either. I, I was really bad at labeling this year. And I'm going to do something quite daring and just take a bite. It's not ripe, obviously, but. Tastes good. Mmm. Woo! Little kick at the end. <laughs> That's really tasty though. I think these, are, these need to ripen up a little bit more. Aubergines are doing good. There's a variety of big and small ones. They're not quite ready to harvest yet, but they're looking nice. Oh, okay. <coughs> That's a bit spicy. Whilst I'm in here, <laughs> why did I eat the chili live? Whilst I'm in here, obviously we're gonna have winter fast approaching now and i need to make use of this this is the first year i've ever had the the undercover growing space so i need to make use of it throughout the winter because it's going to be more mild in here so i've got some cauliflowers i've been told i can grow these in the greenhouse over the winter so i'm going to just pop these in the ground now i just i sowed these seeds a few weeks back and i've just pot potted them on into these little pots and then now if i take them out of here See, they're ready to go in. Look at that lovely network of, of roots there. 
that's when you know they're ready to plant out. So simple case of pulling back my mulch. This is mulch, you would have, if you watch, I'll click a video by here, I'll explain all about mulch. Just make a little hole in there, give it a good water. And we'll get this in the ground. And we'll have a nice cauliflower in the near future, hopefully. There's one in. Put this one next to the Scotch bonnet. Or maybe they need... See, this is the mistake that I always, I always do. Planting things too close to one another. So I'm happy I just remembered that. And cauliflowers, they go big, their leaves do. So I'll put this one over here, actually. And it's quite moist underground anyway, so just a little bit of water. Oh, I'm really earthing today with my hands and my feet in the soil. Get that in there. That's a couple of cauliflowers on their way. I'll get this one in too. And there, uh, from my from my usual level, this is actually quite spaced out. Usually there, I jam pack everything in tight because space is a premium for me because I'm on a hill. I haven't got a huge amount of growing space, so I jam everything together. But hopefully this is uh, an adequate amount of space for my cauliflowers. I can't wait to dive into this watermelon. We'll do that after. Look at my cucumbers. Hugh Richards was here the other day, amazing Welsh gardener. He told me to put another piece of string across, so I did that. And now we're having some lovely cucumbers just hanging midair. I could even do some more string and it could go all the way over the top of the greenhouse. Maybe next year we'll do that, but some beautiful fat, juicy cucumbers everywhere. Look at that one there. Beautiful. My mouth is still burning but it is what it is let's go over here now because i've got some amazing squash to show you but before we get there lovely little golden beets look at that i think i think um, veg to me now that i started growing it is like they're almost like pieces of art look at the the shading of the red it goes deep red to orange to light and i think that is a beautiful sunset almost beautiful golden beet. Golden beets are very delicious, very sweet. So let's go up here. Try not to hurt my feet, my my soft city boy feet. Anyway, I've got my lovely celery, which I'm, it's now ready to harvest. And um, I've been juicing it. It's absolutely fresh and full of vitamins and minerals. I've left, I lost my knife, so let me go and get that. All right, we got the knife. I'm gonna pick some of this lovely celery for you and uh, leaving the roots inside the ground. So they just rot down in the soil, add nutrients. But look how much um, leaves, you know when you buy celery from the supermarket, you never see a load of leaves on it, but the leaves have become really useful in my cooking, drying them out and adding them to salt or to stocks and things like that, making powders out of them too. I love my fresh celery just juiced. This is really cool, isn't it? Amaranth or Callaloo. Look how beautiful that looks. I've been using the leaves occasionally. That's Callaloo. And then the seeds, you can um, make a, well, you can use it as a grain, like you would quinoa or something like that, and make porridge with it, etc. So I'm going to wait for that to dry out before using the grain. My corn's doing good. Nothing to harvest yet, but I definitely have to get in there to show you my squashes. Guys, I am in amongst a, uh, a maze of squash and pumpkin seeds, but I have to show you this. This is gonna be the accommodation that you guys can come and stay in when I start doing my little retreat spaces. I'm hoping this pumpkin grows big enough to put a little door on it and a bed in there and everything like that. Look at the size on that. It's like a big belly just melting into the earth. It's huge. And it's super heavy. 
I don't know what variety it is again, guys. I forgot what it's called, but it's not far off ready to be harvested. It's beautiful though, isn't it? Look at that squash. And this is the other variety here. Beautiful, traditional giant pumpkin. Definitely gonna carve a face into that during Halloween. And I've got even got Russian, I think they're called Russian blue squashes because these are going to go even more blue than they are already they're only small though but uh still nice hearty hardy squash that you know that squashes and pumpkins that will last like five months really when i've um harvested it if you let it harden off beautiful let's pick some courgettes i got loads of them to pick i grew a lovely yellow variety made some lovely recipes with them already we did i did uh, stuffed courgette flowers with these beautiful courgettes i did a courgette risotto we've done loads because there's so many of them look at this one stay there tom i'm going to bring it out for you look at that giant one beautiful that's almost turned into a marrow really you should pick the zucchini or courgette when they're about six to eight inches long and that's where they're most flavoursome but you can make a huge soup out of that and there's so many amongst all this it's actually difficult to pick them because these leaves are quite prickly so you come out with a few scratches but they taste so good it's worth it we've got another one i've only got three courgette plants here but they are just pumping out fruits every day. Let's get some more, see how many I can get. I've just spotted another big one. And another one, another one. Have you got any more to show you? Oh, I've got a weird strange one here. This one is worth waiting for. Oh, I've snapped him. Damn, but that's a strange one. And I think I've got one more here to harvest, but this is the perfect size to harvest them at, this one here. You want to harvest them when they're like that big, really. And they taste so, so good. There's another massive pumpkin here. They're everywhere. I'm going to have a lot of pumpkin this year. All right, let's go up to the top there. I think I've got some lovely pak choy ready to harvest. Chickens get excited whenever I come near them by here, thinking there's going to be food. But they eat so much, they're going to have to wait this time. So this netting is here because if I didn't have it, the butterflies would have destroyed it. They've already destroyed kale down there, so I've covered this kale up. The slugs are getting to it, but it's not as much damage as I thought there would. And look at this, this has been waiting to harvest. <sighs> Lovely bit of pak choy. It's not perfect, but there's a few decent leaves here. And these sort of half munched slugs eaten leaves can go to the chickens. So I'll just throw them to the chickens. Chickens! Pak choy for dinner today. They love any greens, leafy greens and things like that. But this is what I'm gonna eat. So we're filling up my basket. I can't believe there's a watermelon within it. And it's very warm. Been absorbing all that heat from the sun, getting all the nutrients from the sun and the soil, which means it's gonna be a super nutritious watermelon. I've never ever tasted a watermelon that fresh in my life. Well, we'll see what it's like in a minute. Um, got to show you my quinoa. There's some here. It's growing ginormous and I had to sort of support it with some bamboo. I think I'll be get, getting a nice little harvest of quinoa. I've got some more down here and it's starting to flower and go a beautiful shade of orange that I did not expect. Let's go and have a look at that. Pick up my little beet. 
and there's so much food at the minute it's time for me to start preserving it so I've been doing a load of preserves and fermentation but look at the color of that quinoa that is absolutely beautiful who knew well I just certainly did I'm sure lots of people did how beautiful quinoa looked and never in a million years did I expect I could grow it here so um, next year I'll be having a whole row where you see all my squash and celery I'll be having a whole row of quinoa, maybe even two, because it's something I eat all the time. So, so much protein, so good for you. So I gotta get a load more quinoa growing next year. This basket is quite heavy. Let's go down to the raised bed area. Now, something that is just absolutely booming at the minute is my beans. I've said this so many times, but the more beans you pick, runner beans that is, the more they produce. I've just got so many. And I must say, these kind of beans, I only ever used to just steam them and they're so fresh and tasty and good for you. And I often would just eat them like this. Absolutely sweet and delicious. But the other day in my what I eat in the day video where I only eat food that I've grown myself. So everything down to using rhubarb instead of lemon juice we made some delicious meals and I had to use these beans for something, for a main meal for my friends that were joining. I cooked the most delicious pie that I've had in years with these beans and I just didn't expect them to be so savoury and, and rich and luxurious. So they are quite versatile. You don't have to just steam them or boil them. You can make a delicious pie filling with them. So check out that recipe but I'm always just picking these and eating them. It's such a treat. And that to me, I didn't have many experience of, experiences of growing food as a kid. My dad grew, grew the odd tomato, etc. But I remember going over to my auntie's house and she, her house backed onto like an allotment. And I remember just like we'd, me and my cousin would, I don't know, maybe kick a ball over into the allotment. We have to go in the, into the allotments to get the ball back probably much to their hate you know the, the the gardeners would have hated us running through it but I remember running past big tall things of beans like this and um, just getting that smell so it does take me back to when I was a kid and there's just an abundance of these lovely beans to pick so I'm gonna add these to my basket and we'll make something nice tonight but definitely check out that pie recipe this is getting heavy so a few weeks back I sowed some carrots and they're coming up really nicely. I planted out some more chard. Chard is one of my favourite things to eat ever and some more potatoes. And look, look at that flower. If I didn't tell you that was a potato plant and you didn't know what a potato plant looked like, you would never expect such a beautiful flower from a humble potato, would you? That is absolutely spectacular. Now I've had a bit of an issue here. Oh, maybe not, maybe not, maybe they're starting. So these are like a watermelon radish that I've never grown before. And it said I could grow them throughout, I think it was June and July. So I planted them, but a lot of them weren't sort of forming a bulb, but I just picked this one and it is. So maybe I just need to give it some time, have some patience. But you can sort of see what eventually they're gonna look like, a beautiful pink color. So that would be quite interesting. And they taste good already, actually. Just a bit of patience, guys. That's all I need. Let's go over here. What should we talk about? Oh, I've just seen a beet shoot that's sticking out of the ground that you, you have to see. Right here, actually, before we go to the beet shoot, this is um, the salad that I grew this year. I've just sown some more salad, but I'm letting it go to flower and I want to try and harvest the seeds um, because that will save me buying lettuce seeds next year. Um, I've never done it before, but I've seen people do it and hopefully it's as easy as just letting this flower dry out and sprinkling the seeds into your hand and keeping it dry and safe for sowing next year. But I'm just gonna pick this beet here. So this is a cylindrica beetroot. And this is a mighty one. Look at the size on that baby. So the cylindrical beetroot, it does what it says on the tin really, 
it forms a cylinder shape rather than a big circular bulb. So I really love this shape because it's actually so convenient for me because I do a lot of beetroot juices before working out because it's full of nitric oxide. Loads of pro athletes are having beetroot juice because it'll make you go the extra mile, it'll make you do the extra rep because it's packed with that nitric oxide, adds more oxygen to the blood. And this is the perfect shape to just cut into quarters, bang into the juicer, even with the skin on and you can even juice all the leaves and the leaves that aren't chewed apart by slugs I give to my chickens they love beet leaves talking of beets actually we got some more <laughs> candy beets beetroots are the easiest things in the world to grow seriously pop a couple of seeds in a little pot wait for them to produce a, a few leaves and then just pop that little pod into the ground and within a few months they grow and I love how they push each other apart they like growing with one another and uh, that is a lovely candy beetroot, the striped one. So I talked to you earlier about my kale at the top and how I had to net it to stop things like caterpillars and butterflies. And here's an example of not doing that. Look how many, but how many caterpillars are on here. That is kind of a thing of horror movie stuff to me. Creepy callies. That is kind of weird, isn't it? But... Uh, they have to eat something so they can have this kale, but in a few weeks time, they would have all turned into butterflies, flown away, and then this kale will actually, kale will actually sort of rejuvenate itself and um, I'll be able to start harvesting it again. That's all good, but right next to it, I've got my lovely green purslane, which I mentioned a few times, so much omega-3 within it. I'm always just snacking on this and adding it to salads. Mmm. Where are we going next? Look at my bad finger, I cut it earlier. And uh, I had to run to this amazing plant. I mentioned it to my friend Charles Dowding actually the other day and he didn't know, but he was growing it in his garden, Achillea, AKA Yarrow. And Yarrow has got the most incredible um, healing properties where if you have cut yourself or you sprained yourself or injured yourself, it will, it will heal you up. So it stopped me bleeding and that's a property that it, it does have. And let me show you it, it's so beautiful. I got a pink variety here. So when I did cut myself, I just rubbed some of this leaf on and the flower on and it stopped me bleeding. It's absolutely beautiful. And you can also make a thing like a tincture. It's called Achillea because Achilles used it to sort of cure his warriors and they apparently won the battles because he knew the power of Achille, Achillea and uh, it helped his men in battle. One thing I've never grown before, obviously I've only been growing for three years, so there's loads of things that I haven't grown before, but it seems to be doing well, it's my fennel. And I definitely planted it too close to one another, but you can, start, you can see it forming a bulb now and it looks beautiful. I really love fennel in pasta dishes and things like that. And I've even got my rhubarb doing really well now. Look at that. Rhubarb is funny because it looks like you've got loads growing, but it's just mainly a huge leaf, which is actually toxic. So you can only eat the stem. But what I've been doing with this recently, is not even with, with sweet dishes, is fermenting it, lacto-fermenting it, as I have mentioned a few times, struggling to talk today. This is hard. You'll probably notice now when I do my actual videos, it takes me like 17,000 takes because I keep messing up, but... No, I promise I'm actually perfect if the BBC are watching, or Netflix. I'm good, I promise. Anyways, um, yeah, so I just cu cut this fine, add 2% salt to whatever weight the rhubarb is and I let it ferment for a few days out of the fridge and it takes on this most, the most amazing tangy sweet flavour. It's absolutely phenomenal. I still have to do a, a fermentation video for you guys in the near future. I have more cylindrical beets over there. I have some more celery coming up. This is the beetroot I was telling you earlier about how to grow beetroot. Earlier today, I actually just planted out. See, look how tiny this is going to grow into ginormous beetroot like the ones I harvested. And there's just a few plants within that and they'll all push one another apart. 
and that was just a few seeds in a, a few model, modular trees and once they get to that size plant them out. I think we're going to call it a day here unless there's anything else I can think of. I don't know. But what I want to say guys, as the motorbikes go past really loudly, thank you so much for all the support over the last few weeks and months and videos. We've worked so hard um, to produce a load of content because in a few days time, that is so loud. I think motorbikes should be banned in the countryside. Controversial opinion, but I'm sorry. I think motorbikes should just have like a mute button. Sorry if I've upset the motorbike community. I do think they're cool, but they're just loud. <laughs> Anyways, um, I want to say a huge thank you for the support and um, for watching all the videos. It gets harder and harder, YouTube, it does, with the algorithm, algorithms and things like that. It gets so hard and we produce top quality content, so we can't just churn out the content. Um, this is uh, an anomaly in terms of videos because it's just filmed straight live in one take um, and it's a lot easier to, to edit together. But thank you for the support. If you've bought a cookbook, it means the world. Thank you. I'm working on a new one. It's got to be garden to table inspired because this is, it's transformed my life growing food. And um, I feel like a deep connection to growing, to ingredients and my whole philosophy around food has changed. So much so that my future eatery, restaurant, whatever I do, I've got a few plans, will heavily involve a farm to table concept and I would have to be doing a lot of the gardening myself. Um, I'm waffling on here, but I just wanna say a huge thank you. I've said that three times, four times now, but yeah. Follow the social medias. And I will see you soon with a more produced video. Not me waffling around. But look at this lovely harvest. Actually, before you go, should we, should we cut into the watermelon? Yes. It's been just over three years since I released my last cookbook, Plants Only Kitchen. It's been a while since I made a new cookbook. And the reason is because I've been going through some huge lifestyle changes. I've been learning a lot about myself and finding some new hobbies, such as moving to the country and learning to grow my own food. And that will sure be the topic of my next cookbook, I, I, I hope, if I'm lucky enough to get a new um, book deal. We'll see. But I just wanted to bring your attention back to this book, Plants Only Kitchen, because it's a book that I am still so proud of. It's not necessarily the same sort of style of cooking that I do day to day now, but it is super delicious meals. They're simple meals. That's why I made this book. So I wanted to show people that plants plants only cooking can be really simple too they're also protein packed meals too because i love my working out and i love my gym i still to do to this day and i still do cook recipes from this book so i just wanted to let you know that if you want to get a copy i'm doing a discount on my website for actually signed copies my mum is amazing she will send them to you wherever you are in the world and that's the best way to support the channel and everything that we do um, it's getting them through my website rather than, you know, other Amazons and things like that. So if you want to support, this is the best way to support. And if you do, I really, really do appreciate it. It means we can continue to make epic videos on YouTube and content on social media. And if you've already got copies of my cookbooks and you've bought them from the website, thank you so much. I hope they're serving you well in the kitchens. It means the world when I see you um, sharing images on social media of recipes that you've made from the book. And if you want to get a copy, you really want to support the channel, then you can use code GAZ10 Plants Only Kitchen, Gaz10 Plants Only Kitchen for 10% off my website. And that's the best place to get it from to really support. And you get a signed copy and my mum sends it to you. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot to cut this. So here's the end sequence of the video. <laughs> I hope it's actually red inside and I haven't picked it so early. Oh no, no, did I pick it too soon? It's white, it's supposed to be red. Did I pick it too soon? It's so green. No, do you think I could stick it back together and put it back on the plant? Damn, 
No, guys, you've seen the failure. Like, see, constantly learning. That's the moral of this video. I'm going to try it anyway because it's such a waste. Well, it's not a waste because you can always go on the compost heap and the chickens like melon. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Maybe it's just a weird variety that's not red. Because the seeds are fully sized. That is the size of the seed that I sowed. Maybe I didn't make a mistake. And it's just a weird variety. Because that tastes amazing. Oh my word. Guys, the moral of the story is, sometimes you make a mistake, but it turns out to be not a mistake, and you should just carry on and go with the flow and roll with the punches, as they say. Who'd have thought white watermelon grown in Wales would taste so good? That's the end of the video, guys. So long. Thank you again. Mm. That is sensational. Bloody hell. Mmm.